This may be your last opportunity to view old growth Jarrah Forest in the Wellington catchment in the southwest of Western Australia. The Wellington catchment begins high up in the Darling Scarp, 200 kilometres south of Perth and 30 kilometres east of Bunbury. It runs east past the town of Collie and then out to the wheat belt. The region is in the intermediate rainfall zone with an average of 900 to 1200 millimetres of rain a year. A wide variety of native flora and fauna live in this region, including the rare native cat, the Chittage, which is threatened by logging and burning. During the early part of the last century, the region was then known as the Valley of the Giants. In those days, Jarrah trees were selectively logged for railway sleepers and construction timber for schools, houses, bridges and jetties. This is Jarrah forest that was selectively logged early this century. Due to heavy rocky soils, regeneration of the Jarrah forest in this region has been very poor. In those days disturbances in the Collie Basin was minimal because of the steep terrain. But now, 100 years later, there is almost no area left the machine cannot go. This is Loudon Forest in the shore of Dardanup near Bunbury. Loudon is approximately 5,000 hectares in size and dominated by Jarrah, Murray and Blackfoot Forest. According to botanists, Loudon had one of the highest value for vegetation types in the central forest region. Loudon is situated in the Wellington catchment and is now being logged by the Department of Conservation and Land Management, CAM. CAM is the government agency in charge of protecting the native forest, but at the same time are chopping it down. This logging operation you now see is driven by the demand for jarrah logs to burn for charcoal. CAM supplies Japanese owned silicon manufacturer Simkoa with up to 150,000 tonnes of jarrah logs each year. These logs are burned to produce activated charcoal to assist in changing of silver quartz into silicon. Most of these logs come from trees hundreds of years old which play an important role in providing habitat and hollows for birds and animals. Cam and some coa essentially claim that residue or waste jarrah is used to produce charcoal. silicon dioxide and carbon. The way we get carbon is we get it from, from uh, Jarrah timber and most importantly this Jarrah timber is actually residue timber uh, from the forestry operations conducted in the southwest. The important thing to note is that the, uh, looking at a lot of these logs you'll see there's a lot of rot in the, in, the, at, in the base of them. These logs are not usable for any application whatsoever. In, uh, n under normal circumstances, in a logging operation or whatever, these, this wood would just be put into a pile and burnt. And that's typically what's happened uh, in the years prior to some coal intervention. Today, we take these, these uh, waste logs, which are typically uh, wood that's been dead on the forest floor or a dead standing tree, and we systematically cut it up in sawmill over here until we form all these, as we swing around, you'll see all these blocks over here. Um, 
we use a little bit of uh, what we call green timber, that means that the tree was actually alive. You'll see it, some there that are much smaller in diameter. This is when they actually go into a forest. There's actually too much growth in the forest and they actually need to thin it out a little bit so that there's uh, um, so that there's only a few trees remaining so that they develop you know, strong, healthy growth and much, much quicker growth. We're actually just piling those green uh, logs at the moment if you can. Cam and Simcoa claim that eucalyptus plantation timber is not suitable to produce charcoal. Brazil is one of the biggest suppliers of activated charcoal in the world. Brazil sources its charcoal from Australian eucalyptus plantation grown from seed, donated by Australia during the 1950s. Recently the New South Wales Labor government under Bob Carr refused to give a silicon plant similar to Simcoa a license to source their timber requirements from native Ardenbark forest. The average base royalty for charcoal logs to cam is around $5 a tonne. Try buying a tonne of firewood for that amount. These jarrah logs destined for Simcoa could keep a small timber mill in supply for a year. From 1997 to 1998, nearly 14,000 tonnes of charcoal logs were chopped down at Loudon Forest for Simcoa. So I understand that these logs are actually been, um, they're going to Simcoa to be chipped, is that right? To be chipped? Yeah. They're going to Simcoa for green charcoal logs, yes. They're going for green, green charcoal logs, yes. yes. Would you agree that there's some first, second grade logs there? I haven't had a look. These brown mounds you see from the air are pods of Jarrah wood blocks. The blocks are milled from green Jarrah logs supplied by CAM to convert to charcoal. As there is now a shortage of dry Jarrah logs, Simcoa has to spread the blocks to dry. The machine seen operating here in Loudon Forest is debarking the logs for Simcoa. A large percentage of these logs are first and second grade saw logs. This recent footage shows Simcoa stockpiling Jarrah logs on a private property, 10 kilometers away from the main plant. If for some reason some car were to lose its Jarrah resource tomorrow, the plant would have enough stockpiles to continue operating for the next three years. This legal document signed in 1987 between the state government and CAM is quite specific regarding the wood supply to the plant. It states that wood supply to the plant must be of firewood quality. Okay, uh, why are we here yes, uh, in this forest? Well, this is one of the many Jarrah forest areas that CAM and the timber industry are logging at the, mo at the moment, mainly to produce um, Simcoa charcoal logs, Jarrah logs with a silicon smelter. And we're in this particular area here because um, here's a classic example of a breach of the um, regulations to do with the way that logging operations are conducted in the forest. What do you mean? What, what specifically here? Well, they've obviously driven a road through a stream reserve, which is um, something that they're not supposed to do, and it shows that even the minimal safeguards that they claim to have in place to protect the environment when they do the logging operations, those minimal safeguards are being violated. So, um, in this case, the stream, there will be um, sedimentation building up in the stream the first time it rains, and uh, erosion happening, and, you know, the environmental consequences will be quite severe. Okay, um, uh, what about the logs back there? Uh, they will claim they were uh, all going to Simcoa. Uh, would that be accurate in terms of your understanding of the uh, contract with Simcoa? Well, um, CALM has a contract to supply Simcoa silicon smelter with about 120,000 tonnes of Jarrah logs per annum to be turned into industrial charcoal. And a lot of the forests um, that are being logged at the moment are primarily producing charcoal logs and a, and a small quantity of saw logs and what we saw this morning over the other side of Loudoun is a classic example of huge stockpiles of um, Jarrah logs, many of them very good quality logs, many of them very old habitat trees 
that have um, been cut down and, and shipped off to Simcoa and Calm is charging them about $6 a tonne royalty, which is, um, you know, it's about a tenth of what people have to pay for a tonne of firewood. Okay, uh, is, have you seen any other breaches around here? And if not, uh, if so, what, where are they? Well, um, obviously one of our primary concerns in areas of forest like this is the habitat tree situation. Um, we're seeing lots of trees felled that are actual habitat trees, that is to say that there are obviously birds and animals that are actually living in those trees. And then on the other hand, the trees that they are supposedly retaining as habitat trees in many cases are very small trees which will take hundreds of years to actually form hollows that can be used by birds and animals. So. Um, we're losing the actual habitat trees all through the Jarrah Forest and at the same time the trees that are supposedly being left for habitat simply won't provide habitat for hundreds of years. Okay, finally, what, what, what is the uh, prognosis? What are you, how are you going to deal with this, I mean, these, these situations? Well, what's happened is that the government is, is quite seriously misled the public into thinking that there has been some sort of cessation or reduction in the amount of logging in the Jarrah Forest, whereas in fact what's happening all around Donnybrook, all around um, Bridgetown, all around Nanup and other places as well is that there is this full-scale logging of old growth and other very high conservation value Jarrah Forest. And uh, there's just this mad rush on to log the best remaining areas of Jarrah Forest as quickly as possible. This is West Farmers Bunnings Woodship Export Terminal in Bunbury where over 60% of West Australia's logged old growth forest will eventually end up. West Farmers Bunnings have contracts to export nearly 1 million tonnes of Mary and Carey wood chips to Japan to be pulped for paper products. The lighter coloured wood chips are sourced from plantations but are rarely exported because of the low price of our native forests for wood chips to West Farmers Bunnings. Just outside the city of Bunbury at Picton West Rail, a government-owned agency, keeps its jarrah sleepers. As far as the West Australian public are aware, jarrah is no longer used to produce railway sleepers. The government claimed only third grade jarrah was used to produce sleepers and that July 1999 was to be the cut-off point. However, West Rail requires first grade timber for all its sleepers. This docket shows that railway sleepers are still being cut from first grade Jarrah as recently as February 2000. The docket also shows that these sleepers came from West Farmers Bunning Steam Mill, a sawmill near Manjimup. Steam Mill is well known for only milling first grade Jarrah logs. The fine woodcraft industry could increase the value of this Jarrah a thousand times over. There are now alternatives available for jarrah sleepers such as concrete, but the symbiotic relationship between West Farmers Bunnings and the government overrides common sense. Back in the Wellington catchment, logging has intensified, not only in the jarrah forest, but also in state-owned pine plantations around the reservoir. The Wellington Reservoir is now undrinkable because of high salinity levels. Salinity in West Australia is a major concern with nearly one third of the state's agricultural land affected. During the 1980s, the West Australian state government imposed bans on clearing of native vegetation on landowners in the Wellington catchment to help control salinity. Over $20 million of taxpayers' money has already been spent in compensation for clearing controls. That, of course, does not apply to the Department of Conservation and Land Management, CAM, who on behalf of the state government have logged plantations right up to the water's edge. Even the logging of native forest in the catchment must adhere to certain legally binding conditions. CAM ignores these conditions, as do the Waters and Rivers Commission, which is supposed to control and monitor the water quality. Of approximately 150,000 hectares of high conservation native forest logged in the last 20 years in this region, 
only 25,000 hectares of native forest still remains in the Wellington catchment. Since wood shipping of native forest began 25 years ago, and the introduction of the silicon plant in 1988, the Jarra forest has been treated by CAM like a quarry, without any concerns or responsibilities for its unique biodiversity. Thousands of tons of Jarra waste litter the forest floor, including stockpiles left to rot and burn. Simcoa, West Farmers Bunnings and CAM, along with bauxite mining, dieback, exotic weeds, feral animals, climate change, clearing for agriculture and frequent burning are all having a major effect on the Jarrah forest ecosystems. The Preston Environment Group in 1997 proposed a 30,000 hectare national park in the Wellington catchment to include the forests surrounding the Wellington Reservoir. Those forests included Loudoun, Arcadia, Yabarup, Javas, Leonard, Davis and Mangalup. These areas, if protected, can be a huge benefit to local communities for recreation, cultural heritage values and protection against salinity. Over 200,000 visitors enjoy recreation in the Wellington catchment each year. Ecotourism, if managed on a sustainable basis, can generate employment and wealth into the local communities. By the year 2000, Loudoun Forest has already been intensively logged. Time is running out in the catchment with Arcadia and Yabarup Forest on CAM's logging list over the next two years. West Farmers Bunnings have contracts with CAM to continue logging Mary and the Jarrah Forest for wood chips until the year 2003. Simcoa still have access to charcoal logs from CAM until the year 2002, with the right of an extension of supply for a further five years. Even though plantation bluegums now available can be used for wood chips and charcoal. At the current intensity of logging, the last remaining areas of bog road forest cannot possibly sustain or supply West Farmers and Simcoa's future timber demands. CAM and the state government, West Farmers Bunnings and Simcoa, have a moral and social responsibility to the 90% of West Australians who want an end to the destruction of the remaining old growth forest. An immediate moratorium on logging in old growth forest is the only solution. If this is not achieved soon, future generations will be asking, where did we go wrong? Who was responsible? Who should be accountable? For your children's sake, take a stand. I'm addressing the people of Western Australia. I hope the people in there are listening. And I'm addressing the bureaucrats that are out in these buildings. There are three core parts of this whole issue of old growth forests. There is the destruction of the old growth forests themselves. There is the rate at which that is taking place. And there is the involvement of government in that whole spectrum of issues. I don't recall any issue which has generated such enormous and strong public opinion and persistent action as this one. I do not recall an issue which has received such strong opinion from the public. I do not recall an issue which has raised such passion as well as good logical argument. And I do not recall an issue which has been so badly dealt with by government. The proponents of the current industry and the way it works will tell you that CALM is doing well by world standards. Maybe, but the concepts on which they're operating 
uh, out of date and not relevant to this day and age. Get them out! There is a spirituality which is necessary in this day and age, which one can achieve from walking into those old growth forests. Nature will be our salvation. The old growth forests are a very evident part of that important aspect of nature in this part of the world. The previous speaker or two referred to the job situation. What is so special about not restructuring the timber industry? What about the Telstra workers that are going to lose the jobs? What about Midland workshops? What about farmers? What about the education department? What about hospitals? They've all had to cope with it, and none of them had any federal money to help them. The forest workers have. Surely Mr Court and his government can make a decision about what is the right thing to do. They do not belong to the members of Parliament. Street and St George's Terrace. No! They belong to us. Yeah! For those that can't see the difference between a plantation and an old growth forest, then I suggest you go down there very quickly and have a look. Plantations do not replace the biodiversity which we know exists in those forests. And unfortunately none of us are going to be around in a thousand years when they may have achieved something of a regeneration of that biodiversity. There is one simple decision that Mr Court and his government could make. Today, or he needs a 